This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 308, How to Cross Every Item Off Your To-Do List in One Night, part one, by David Kane of raptitude.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome back if you're a regular oldie, or if you're new here, hello for the first time. This is one of three podcasts where we read to you from amazing blogs and resources so that you don't have to sit down and read for yourself. And now all week I've been talking about trying to get Tim Ferriss's attention to ask him if I can read his content here on the podcast. And today is the day that I'm asking for your help. If you help, I'll put you into a drawing to win his book, The 4-Hour Workweek, and then an extra drawing to win Mark and Angel's book too. To participate, all you have to do is tweet at T Ferris, that's with two R's and two S's, today, and tag me in it too, and that's old podcast, and ask him if he'd be okay with me reading his blog right here on the podcast. If you do that sometime today, which is Friday, you'll be entered to win those two books, and you'll be helping me try to reach him, which is greatly appreciated. He's actually one of the first authors that I tried to reach out to when starting this podcast almost a year ago, and I was never able to get a response, so I thought asking you for help might actually work. But enough of that for now, let's hear today's post and start optimizing your life. How to Cross Every Item Off Your To-Do List in One Night, Part 1, by David Kane of raptitude.com. For the entire year that I've lived in this suite, A cardboard velvet box piled over with envelopes and mail sat on the floor between my filing cabinet and my entertainment unit. Today, it is gone, because yesterday, I took 20 minutes to file it all. It feels very different in here now. Cleaner karma. Better feng shui. It almost feels like I removed something from my head. That box was, ostensibly, an active part of my workflow system. Any file that ended up out of its home was to be dropped in there, the whole lot to be refiled at the end of every day. All of the other components of my system have been in a similar state of stasis for a similarly long time. It was months ago that my master to-do list grew so stagnant and irrelevant that I stopped even looking at it, which reveals an interesting fact about our to-do items. They often don't really need to be done at all. There are items on it that have been quote-unquote urgent for months. I've certainly experienced inconveniences and lost opportunities because of my ridiculous level of procrastination, but clearly none of the 80 forgotten items on my list were life or death, or I'd be dead. Life has been generally pleasant. So the bulk of my supposed must-do items, and probably yours too, were completely optional, benign opportunities to get ahead rather than the creeping imperatives they seem to be. Still, their undoneness imposes a persistent mental burden on the clarity of your mind and your self-esteem. Unmet commitments represent personal shortcomings. I am a career procrastinator. So are many of you, I gather. None of the articles I've written has inspired more heartfelt, oh my God, that's me, responses, than one I wrote about procrastination. In the article, I argue that procrastination is not laziness, but a symptom of certain kinds of private fear. Fear is much less a part of my day-to-day consciousness now than it was when I wrote that. I feel like I'm game to take on my concerns as they emerge in life, including the fuzzier, scarier projects that made my to-do list items into more of a permanent collection than a rolling list the two approaches. Everyone experiences a steady stream of to-do items in their lives. People generally subscribe to one of two philosophies in dealing with them, acting on them arbitrarily as they become salient or by using a system to organize them. In other words, they either keep their list of concerns in their head or they put them on paper. Some people manage to live relaxed, productive lives, allowing their workload to float freely in their minds. They do what needs doing whenever it feels like it needs doing. For the rest of us, this feels too crazy. It's hard to walk around with a persistent feeling that you're not doing something that needs doing. When there are 80 things that feel like they need doing, it's hard to regard them as a finite list of concerns that can each be dealt with. So naturally, we want to write them down and see that there are only 37 concerns right now, and you could do one or two or 10 today. A list alone constitutes a workflow system. A system only works when it feels like everything is accounted for somewhere outside your head. Even if your system is a cubicle wall plastered with yellow post-its, if you have faith that it's all there and nothing is floating unarticulated in your head that may fall through the cracks, then you can work through them and feel in control. Most people find that a simple list isn't detailed enough. It doesn't articulate priorities. It makes it look like everything is on today's plate. A lot of people have tiers of lists, a list of phone calls to make, a list of purchases to make, a list of things to do before you die. Probably the most popular comprehensive workflow system is David Allen's Getting Things Done. I have long fantasized about mastering the GTD system and the mind-like water state that is supposed to arise once you've properly implemented it. 
This achievement even had a place on my own bucket list for a while. The general idea is, find that out in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled How to Cross Every Item Off Your To-Do List in One Night by David Kane of raptitude.com. And once again, today's the last day to help out in trying to reach Tim Ferriss to see if he'll let me read his blog to you right here on the podcast. In exchange for helping, I'll enter you in a raffle to win my copy of his book and then another bonus raffle to win Mark and Angel's book too. All you have to do is tweet at T Ferris, that's with two R's and two S's, and at old podcast, and say something like, hey, at T Ferris, I love your blog. At old podcast reads his favorites to us on his podcast. Can you have permission to read yours too? Anything along those lines, just make sure both he and I am tagged in it, and I'll give away those two books tomorrow to random people who try to get his attention and permission for me. It'd be awesome to bring you his content. He has some really unique and helpful stuff. And I'll leave it at that for today. Happy Friday. I hope you're having a great start to your weekend and we will finish this post in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits. Optimal Living Daily.